Starwind has got to be one of the coolest mods I've ever seen. It's a total conversion mod so large it could be its own game. It uses Morrowind so it's really just the Morrowind engine and base mechanics but tweaked for Star Wars. The amount of work that went into something you can play for free is crazy. Starwind exists at the time of KOTOR and while you don't have to play KOTOR to appreciate it, there are some references you will only understand if you have played it. The list of races is quite long and I really appreciate all the choices for starting out. I ended up doing a few characters but the main footage I'll be showing is my first character. Once you're done there's still skills and classes and such for you to pick that are still very Morrowindy but have been changed for Star Wars purposes. We start on the Endar Spire, a self-employed mercenary hired by the Republic. The Sith attack from KOTOR is happening and we need to get to an escape pod and leave. Bastila looks not nearly as good, but I'm not going to complain too much. She helps us into escape pods and now our actual story begins. We finally wake up on Terrace after our escape pod crashed. Only by this time, the events of KOTOR have already happened and Terrace is in shambles. We meet Shade, the Chancellor's daughter. With him dead, she's apparently next in charge. I guess that's how that works. But for now, she wants to leave until Terrace is more safe and she's basically offering us freelance work. We again crash, this time on Tatooine. Shade needs to heal and needs us to find her contact who can help with Terrace. Off we go to do that and whatever else happens. Starwind piles side quests on you and most of them happen to be on the same planet, which is nice. The only downside is, some are not, and we are still using the Morrowind journal system, and so that sucks ass. Tatooine is great, filled with Tusken Raiders and Jawas and the ugliest Banthas you've ever seen. Fortunately, there are mods for making the Banthas look better. Hell, this mod has more mods for it than some games have. They did a good job translating some things. Blaster honestly works really well and hit chance has been improved so you don't start out looking like a dumbass. Lightsabers are basically the same as blades in Morrowind, but glowing. There is a cantina and giant worms and an arena you can fight in and become champion of just like on Terrace. You even see Bendix, Starkiller's brother, and he's your championship boss here. There are also references to things like a Spaceballs Winnebago and the Schwartz. One thing that blew me away is just how much dialogue is fully voice acted. Morrowind wasn't even voice acted, so this is impressive. Welcome to the medical bay. Sit down and let me have a look at you. Yes, looks like you don't have the ruse disease. So, the disease infects the body, causing the victim to suffer deterioration. There are a couple ingredients I need if you are interested. I'm attempting to create- I will say the music isn't good, but there are mods to use actual Star Wars music. That said, I didn't do that because I did not need any copyright strikes. One complaint I do have is that there is a large, vast emptiness to much of the levels. And I get that this is the Dune Sea, so I'm giving that a pass. And I get Tatooine is mostly empty, so I get what they're doing there. But from a game design, there's too many planets like this. We eventually find out the informant is dead, so now we are in need of a ship. We use the Zerka travel ships to travel to Manon. They work like silt striders from Morrowind. One more tip, be sure to buy the call drop ship at the med facility because it works like an intervention spell and it can teleport you to the nearest town. On Manon, we buy a ship, but now we need to get a few parts for it, which involves going to different planets using the Zerka Corporation. The bad side is you could have totally picked these parts up and sold them not realizing you need them. Off we go to Kashyyyk which also looks pretty good. And while some things do look bad, like Wookiees, I will cut them some slack because apparently even big Star Wars games struggle with Wookiees. On the flip side, many things do look good, like the Kinrath, which really looks like Kinrath, and the Rancor. Also, speeders are available and you should buy one. Even though they are expensive and they don't look good, they help you move fast through large open land. And Kashyyyk has that, with deep, dark depths and a hidden area with Grey Jedi who can train and teach you. They did a good job making Kashyyyk feel like Kashyyyk, especially the KOTOR version, and it's honestly pretty great. We get the part we need and we head to our next place. 
Back to Manon, you need a reputation of 20 to get into the city, which makes sense for Manon, because they are like that. But it does mean that we had to go to Tatooine and Kashyyyk first. Manon looks great. It has Selkath. It's very reminiscent of KOTOR. It has a lot of stores and Easter eggs. I think one of the best is that you can talk to Jolie Bendo, who's waiting outside the courtroom while KOTOR's main character would be in the courtroom at that time. The developers honestly do not get enough praise for all the work they did here. I get that it's like really niche and that it's running on a game from 2003 that you have to own in order to play this game, but still this must have taken forever and it really shows. We find our last piece underwater, which just like in KOTOR, we have to go in. Fortunately, it is really close by where you enter. With a running ship, there's a ton more places to travel. And check out this fast travel to different planet system. It's fucking awesome. Off we fly to Dantooine, specifically to find a mercenary named Theg. They did a good job on this planet as well. Lots of farmland and even those stingrays from KOTOR are here for you to fight. There's also a Shaggy and Scooby reference. The planet is very Dantooine though, and even has two manners at odds with one another. At last we find Theg, and he joins us as well as his team of Mandalorians for retaking Terrace. This takes me to Narshada, where I didn't have to go, but I wanted to do that before heading back to Terrace. Narshada has to be my favorite place in Star Wars, so I really wanted to run around and check it out. And yeah, it wasn't in the first KOTOR game, but we don't need it to be only planets from the first KOTOR game. Besides, it's in the second one, so it's fine. There's a Morrowin reference, because Caius is here, and he's even doing moon sugar and skooma which is pretty great there's a terrace kisai dojo where people practice the martial art from that terrible game star wars masters of terrace kisai so that's really cool and you can even learn it as well there's also a museum of oddities with some things from marwin but relabeled there's a flux capacitor, a Lego stormtrooper, a talking rag ghoul. But outside all those references, Narshada is just fucking beautiful. It's like if Coruscant and Gotham City had a baby. And they did such a great job with it, even giving it flying cars going through the air, as well as having crime be rampant and having hut cartels. Plus when it's raining and foggy, it looks extra great. Kinda gives it a Blade Runner vibe. Well, enough of that. Back to Terrace and the retaking of it. Shade Thag and Shade Second in Command guy Gizeki all planned to attack on different fronts. Battling through hordes of rag ghouls and the leftover ship troopers who were abandoned on the planet. After taking it back, Terrace is being rebuilt. We get parts of the city up and running again. We get a cantina going because that's obviously what we need. And also Janice Nell. Janice Nell is our girl and Janice Nell from KOTOR is here. It makes me very happy. I was worried she died. But thanks to this non-canon fan game that coexists with a non-canon Star Wars game, I now know Janice now is fine, which is what I needed. Just like KOTOR Terrace, there are different levels to it, including a very low part of Terrace infected by rag ghouls. Also remember that one guy in KOTOR who was like, there's a promised land of actual nature and stuff. Thanks to this game, we know he wasn't just blowing smoke out his ass, and it really does exist. Shade has us get the sewers up and running again for Terrace, and sends us to go back to some of the planets we have been before to help her. This involves faking a murder to get a guy off Narshada to help Shade, getting a crew from Narshada to help Shade rebuild Terrace, getting distracted by Narshada's gambling chance bowl and save scumming to win a lot of money, meeting Hod Towered and Gil Bates, that wasn't important, they're just also there, and going to Manon to find a doctor who has multi-personality disorder, and who he is, is depended on where he is and when it is, what time it is, etc. How helpful he will be completely depends on what time it is and where he is. The last thing we do 
is weird. We gotta fly around in this space area that barely works or functions. I really hate it, but fortunately we only gotta do it once. You gotta board this cargo ship that has a weird view and then get the parts Shade needs. This takes us back to Terrace. Gazeki needs help fighting the Black Valkyries. Also, this is as close to the Phantom Menace game part two as I am getting. Look at the camera angle I can use. How awful. Just like my darling game, The Phantom Menace. Shade asks us to get a power source from a Sith base for her. This takes us to the Sith base M478, which is its own little planet we can fast travel to. But unlike the other planets, this one is really tiny and is just one Sith base. We also have to kill that one robot from the Tribunal expansion to get the power source. And now we have to go back to Terrace. Here Gazeki has a plan to more easily take over Terrace. He's turning people into rag ghouls. He then asks if you will be one and it does not matter what you answer because he's gonna turn you into one. I always hate working my way up to be in something only to have something like this happen. It works really well for a fear because then you're worried will I ever return to my current body? It's good, like, body horror stuff, I guess, but but I don't like it. As a rag ghoul, you gotta fight a bunch of others, but on one life bar, as you can't heal, rest, or use items or powers. You also have to move really fast and jump insanely, which makes platforming sections really tricky. You also have to fight a motherfucking Rancor as a rag ghoul. The last part is to fight Gazeki and a bunch of other rag ghouls. Then you get turned back normal. You confront Shade about what happened, but she already knows. She was a shit this whole time. Who expected that from someone named Shade? Not I. This gives you two options. Join Shade, which gives you no benefits, or kill Shade, which makes you the Chancellor, and Theg gives him and his Mandalorians loyalty to you. Plus Shade is dead. So it is an easy option, and with that, the main story is over. Now even though it is over, there's still a couple places I didn't explore on my star map, so I figured I'd check them out. And I will say, it is a neat novelty that they are there, but don't expect them to be anything near the size or scope or care of the previous ones. The Gamorrean Guard Planet has the most content and it's fucking bare bones. It feels like a lot of stuff was going to be here, but just isn't, and it's pretty fucking empty, which I'm not upset about. Like I said, these guys basically made a whole ass game for free, and on top of that, it's a decent game. It's pretty damn good. Hoth has the least amount of content, as it's literally just wall-to-wall -wall emptiness that you can only explore for a short time as you're freezing to death, which is accurate to what Hoth is, but like, why include it if it's gonna be absolutely nothing, you know? And last off is Dathomir. Again, I could tell there was stuff planned here, but that just didn't come to be. Zabrix and Night Sisters do exist here for you to fight, but that's really it. There's no quest locations or people to talk to or really anything. I did find this though. It looked like the Master Emerald from Sonic Adventure, so I had to check it out. But it was far enough away I had to use cheats, which thanks to Starwind being Morrowind, I was able to use Morrowind cheats by rewording the Starwind stats. And it turns out this is actually a crystal on top of a palace that led to the Night Mother, who you could actually fight and take her outfit. So that was pretty cool. It's like a bonus final boss. But yeah, that's basically all the content. I also really like The Phantom Menace, so I did a run playing as if I was playing f that one Mandalorian guy from The Phantom Menace. And I mostly pulled that off. Anyway, this is a hell of a mod. A full ass game. If you're into Star Wars and Morrowind, or even just one of them, I feel like this is still worth a play. And it's not hard to set up, and there's tons of mods for it to add replayability.